I mean, thank you so much. So we have a lot of, I'm going to try and just keep pushing. Yeah, this, let's just we have a lot strong. of questions. Mm -hmm. Constellation Pegasus, thank you. I plan on getting the class soon. Also, is there any credibility of Jesus going to Spain? That trip kind of exposes what he was doing and looked like he failed. I don't know if you mean Jesus or Paul because no, Jesus he means never... Jesus. It's a it's a video that uh, I'm interviewed in it. Uh, Semka Jakovovich did a video in his Secrets of the Cross series, I think it was, or one of his History Channel series. And it had Jesus going to Spain. And uh, what he argues is that the language in Mark about the Sea of Galilee and the lake and so forth. And I right. think McDonald talks about this too. Yes. It actually got a validity to it. Not that he went to Spain, but that language is not about a little lake in the Galilee. The original source of all that lake stuff is on the Mediterranean Sea. Right. And it has to do with the Mediterranean Sea. And what he then argues is that the Garasa or Gerid, the Gerizim demoniac, as he's called, mm -hmm. that's actually a place in Spain that he locates. And in the video goes to it and talks to people and they go, oh, yeah, we've always known that. We have traditions that Jesus came <laughs> I'm sure they're middle, e middle ages, probably. Yeah, but it's he, still cool to find but out. But it's that cool. The, but yeah. it's. I'd say, you know, did Jesus go to Spain? I, I'm teaching Mark. So, right. you know, if you, if you take the Mark course, I'm not going to get into that. But I did agree to appear in the video. And he has me sitting on the shore of the Mediterranean, pointing behind me, saying, you know, is it possible Jesus went here? So all I do in the video is point out that, yes, indeed, it doesn't say it doesn't say lake. It says sea. And the way the storms described and also Gadara and where it's located doesn't seem to fit Mark. Exactly. So that would then hook into some of the material that Dennis has done, whether one agrees totally with Dennis or not. And I've got his book on order and I want to read his latest work on I Mark. That's something that I can't wait to hear your thoughts on as someone who's I read want, I want to hear it. But I'm that's blowing. where that goes. Now to say, did the historical Jesus actually leave you know, Galilee and Roman Judea, Palestine, and go to Spain. I would say probably not in that passage. Like the Gerizim demoniac is presented as part of the Decapolis. I just stay with Mark on that. Yeah. However, you got medieval stories of little Jesus going to around Spain and up to England because you have to go around Spain to get up to England. Right. Because his uncle Joseph of Arimathea is a tin merchant, and that's where you get all that Glastonbury stuff and so forth. I get asked this all the time by students. What I did for years was to say, and I say this to all of your viewers, ask yourself, what is the earliest source we have on that? Whatever the, that is, what's the earliest source we have on that, and how do we have it? That's very upsetting. Mm -hmm. Because I would say the earliest source on a lot of things is Josephus. You got to ask the other question. And how do you have Josephus? Mm -hmm. Which you've done shows on with Steve Mason and others. Like, well, how did Josephus get preserved by Christians and so forth? And so you always have to ask. So you remember uh, uh, Dan Brown's stuff? the Da Vinci yeah. Code, yeah. they end up in Glastonbury and yeah, Jesus might have gone here as a kid and plant, Joseph planted this tree right here. Okay, that's the local legend. What's the earliest record? Or Mary Magdalene's in Spain and they found her tomb and they even did DNA on this corpse's hair. So now we got Mary Magdalene's DNA and her hair is red and so forth. What's the earliest source? Time and time again, you're not going to get past the Middle Ages. You're yeah. really not. So my work has tended to always go with the, if possible, a first or second century source. Once you get into third, fourth, fifth century, so much legend has taken over that, and then if you go to the Middle Ages, forget it, you know. And so all the you hit people on the web, it's just crazy. They'll say, well, Joseph Arimathea was married to a woman named so-and-so, and they had three kids, and they give their names and everything, and you go like, what? 
what what's the source on that and you find well it's a chronicle of the medieval writer so and so but it disappeared and we don't really have it or something like that you know yeah but people are quoting this like it's a historical source so you have to be careful thank but, you james you know mark is mark so yeah sages and pages thank you for the super chat i've reviewed the jesus dynasty on my channel great job but James, son of Alpheus, equals James, son of Clopas. Could you explain the connection? Yeah, the uh, the idea that I present in the Jesus dynasty, and uh, I, I've said before on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm convinced of it. On Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm not sure. And on Sunday, I flip a coin because a lot of the things we're not sure of. But it is the case that kalaf in Hebrew the verb kalaf comes over into Greek as alpheus, kal, you can hear it, kalpheus. It's got the three letters of Hebrew. And so klophus, see the k, l, and the f, kalaf, klophus, kalpheus, it's all the same name. And it means to replace. So I suggested that when Joseph died, if he had no children of Mary, then you would have the Leviret marriage. And that would be that his brother, Kalaf, the replacer, of course, that wouldn't be his real name. That would be his nickname, uh, would be, you know, it'd be like Peter the Rock, James the replacer, meaning it's Joseph's brother, Clophus, the replacer, who actually would be the father of those other boys, James, Joseph, and Simon, and Jude. That's a possible theory. Eisenman is one of the people that has suggested this, and I presented it in the book, gave them credit, others credit. Um, I'm not totally sure, but it does. Uh, I'll tell you this, Derek, this gets back to Mark. If you go to the list of the 12, there are four lists of the 12. We have one in the book of Acts. We have Luke, Matthew, and Mark each have one. But Mark is the key list of the 12 because he's first. And I think I've got my Bible right open to it here. When you list out the 12, and if I ask you, name four, we'll just, just take a minute, and I think sages will be interested in this. I ask you, um, let's name the 12 apostles. Ready? Let's go. Most of my students will get Peter, Andrew, James, and John. That's just in their head. So you're going to have three tiers of four. Ready? Peter, Andrew, James, and John, the two brothers, sets of brothers that were fishermen. I'll make you fishers of men. Most people can get those. Most can't get the next four. We're still not down to the third tier. The next four, usually somebody will think of, was Matthew on? Yeah, who else? Oh, God, let's see. Oh, Philip, Philip, Philip was one. And what about uh, Thomas? Yeah, of course, the doubting Thomas and Bartholomew or Thaddeus. Okay, I got, I've got eight. Okay, now you're in trouble. You got to give me four more. And I'm going to give you one of them, Judas Iscariot, because I know you're going to get that. So now we got three apostles. Can you... Without looking, tell me the names of the last three. No, Derek. Isn't no. that funny? Even Derek Lambert does well, not. Well, I know. I'm not. <laughs> well, listen to this: James, Simon, and Jude. The names of the three brothers of Jesus. Right. And one of them's called James, son of Alphaeus. You see? Yeah. Son of the replacer. So it's a possible theory that has been suggested, and um, whether it's you know, we just, how often do I say to you, Derek, so many things hang on a thread. Yeah. I know your mythicist would love that. Yeah. Damn right. It's hanging on a thread. Like, how do you know Jesus is a carpenter? Well, first of all, it's not carpenter. It's builder. Okay. He's a builder. But how do you know that? One verse, Mark 6, 3. One verse. But everybody knows it. I've seen it on license plates. My boss is a Jewish carpenter. One verse. Doesn't mean it isn't true. I actually would tend to kind of go with it. It fits in with the context, you know, of Joseph's also called a carpenter in Matthew. So, you know, maybe, or a builder, a tecton. 
But a lot of times we don't know. So you ask, well, who's James, son of Alphaeus? Is that Jesus' brother? Is that not Jesus' brother? Did Joseph have kids with Mary? Uh, anyway, that's what I can give you are the possibilities. Right. Yeah. So, I appreciate yeah. that about you, too. And you're not dogmatic about it. We've done various discussions like that. 